take it anymore. Where was I? So I'll grab a mill, I'm going to take some off the top. Uh, as long as I'm within uh, range of my center line of the lathe and have enough uh, meat for screw threads, I'm golden. And since I'm a high rake, low tool pressure setup here, especially with this one, this is going to be probably an aluminum bar only, I don't need a whole lot of meat down here to keep uh, the bit from moving around or deforming. It's just basically to keep it there in front of the metal. So I got a lot of leeway here. Okay, again, why am I taking off that top of the metal? Well, if you look at that sucker, you see that dish? I don't want my pocket wall to come above the lowest spot where these edges come in because I don't want any cracking or damage to start on any of the cutting edges. So I want my wall to stop just short of the lowest point, and that means these points are going to sit proud. So I need to make sure that proudness there of that tip is still going to be below uh, center line so I can do adjustments for the lathe. And I can't afford some more because right now I'm like right on the edge of being able to use it with the compound because I really did buy the wrong size tool holder. All right, I'm going to take off another 10, I think. Maybe 20. Now that was 60 there. Let's go to 80. Yeah, for my comfort, I'm going 80. Now this is probably a good time to blue and scribe so I can keep an, an, uh, a close watch on my cuts and make sure I'm not going to make a, a very easily st made stupid mistake. I'll take this down 5 degrees, this down 5 degrees, and then get away, narrow the waist down on the tool, which I might wind up using a bandsaw for to get the majority of that off. I guess to make it easier, I do have to do these outside cuts. So let me get something started here at the right angles. Five degrees off this corner and five degrees digging in over here and hopefully I won't kill anything doing that. So I'm right at uh, 315 now. Just happens to be what it's set for and I want five degrees this way, so 310 does not have to be precise you just want the clearance uh, the more precise you are the more uh, more you match the bottom pad of the bit so it gets good support all the way around and then to get my bottom relief I can just hit that with the belt sander to get that seven degree because I really don't have any tilting function but I can probably swing it on the vise somehow we'll get there
took a bunch of spring cuts in there because of this machine is not rigid by any means. Now I want to swing this over 10 degrees so I can get the 5 degree going in, in towards the tool. It'll be right about there. Now that's going to be a little trickier. What are you going to do, right? And looks like my overload kicked in, which is the absolute first time it has ever happened. Probably is a used old ass bit, so I get a lot of these out of the scrapyard. A lot of times uh, machine shops will, you know, be doing a lot of fine finish work and it's just not good enough for them and it's not economical to have them sharpened. Well, I'll pick them up and, and use them myself. Let's see if they got any power back yet. Nope. Tell you the truth, since it's the first time it's happened, I don't know how to reset it. Uh, my DRO is still on, so I didn't pop the breaker. I'll do a power cycle on it. So that it. I can't really believe I tripped that out. No, I can't believe that at all. Motor's not warm. Hmm. Captain Kirk, we seem to have a problem. So now I've got this pad taken down and I have the front angle and the side angle taken care of. Okay, now I've got my side release. I just want to put a quick scribe in to give me an idea of how far I need in I need to make the pockets because the level excuse me the angle is already going to be established by the table. I'll just grab something conveniently sharp like a a pointed center finder and uh, I'll just get something in there and then over here will be the relief for the point Probably a little on the big side. But for aluminum, it's not a big deal. That's the only kind of work I do. The stuff that's not a big deal. I'm not ready for precision shit yet. Did I just throw my mill on the floor? That blows. Now let's see how close I can get with a quarter inch rougher. Since I'm already established on this five degree line, I'm just gonna come over here and pick up this one because it's the same angle. I don't know what kind of mills you get, but the ones I get do not leave a perfectly flat bottom mirror finish. So it's gonna be a little irregular. And when you're dealing with carbide, it's very brittle. And if you happen to have irregularities at the wrong place, like right at the tip, it's gonna crack. And we're at least maybe want to flex. I don't know how much it can flex. But no, I don't need you talking to me while I'm on the camera. You go away. Bite me. No. Everybody wants to bother Uncle Ed. Oh, kick your ass, cat. The pocket doesn't have to be deep, just enough to keep this tool from wanting to move. So hell, I can go uh, 120. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 120,000. I'm going to lower my column to get me as much rigidity as I can. Somewhere like that. Son of a bitch. Broken indicator.
it's sitting just a hair on the inside and that's the space that the glue will take up when I set it in place. And now I need seven degrees on the nose. Definitely the biggest tool I have. <laughs> oh, look at this one. <laughs> uh, my machine, four inches should be good. That was just too sweet. There we go. If I can make them, you can make them. <laughs> 